Excellencies, Mr. Chairman, honorary guests, dear colleagues, dear audience, thank you very much for inviting me to speak here about sustainability, a topic that is of great, if not decisive, relevance for companies, civil society, politics, for us as individuals. Crises can be opportunities. Right now we have the opportunity, as well as the need for a recovery of economic activity, a resilient recovery. Such a recovery can be a significant step towards a sustainable normal. Companies and markets really need to actively transform. Governments have started major programs. I understand that South Korea has decided for a program in the volume of 20% of its GDP. This recovery must lead towards sustainability and must us actually also equip to deal with future crises. It has to be a starting point for a sustainable new normal and companies and markets need to take action for that change. This is exactly where long-term investors can play a quite important role and that's why we formed the UN convened Net Zero Asset Owner Alliance. That's a group of long-term investors, by now we are 25, um, more than 4.5 trillion uh, of assets. That's a group of um, investors who have committed their entire portfolio to be climate neutral by 2050. You should envisage in the target state these portfolios to actually contain almost only assets that are individually climate neutral. Of course, there will be a few assets which still have positive greenhouse gas emissions, meaning negatively they contribute uh, to climate neutrality. And for exactly that reason, there must also be assets that work as carbon sinks. So that's the target state for the portfolio. In order to achieve such portfolios, we have to come up with long-term paths that define the development, the transformation towards the climate neutrality. These long-term paths ideally should be developed for entire industry sectors. Once we have it for industry sectors, we can use it then in the discussions with companies. And not only with those companies, we can actually also use it to work with the suppliers and the customers of these companies to have analogous discussions about their paths. So you can envisage that we are working on a set of pathways towards climate neutrality, or if you want, you can even envisage this as a network of pathways, which, uh, which really define how companies are transformed, kind of in lockstep, or at least in a very, very good alignment. And that's what should describe or create for you the picture how an entire industry sector can be moved towards sustainability. To implement these pathways, we have to engage companies. That means we as long-term investors have to actively reach out to those companies, have discussions with them about these uh, pathways. And obviously those companies need to be um, open and willing to engage with us. That's one of the uh, very important reasons why it makes sense to form a coalition, an alliance, like the Net Zero Asset Owner Alliance, because then a larger group of investors, of owners of these companies, approach a single company um, with one voice. And that creates quite some uh, efficiency for uh, that company in discussing the path towards uh, climate neutrality. Now, this, uh, the, the work on the pathways may face certain challenges. One of these challenges is that measures that are needed to really transform to the climate neutral state are not readily available. These are measures that need to be developed in a research project. Such research projects need to be financed and here again long-term investors can play a very interesting role. By reaching out to developing financial institutions, they can come up with a partnership that 
provides then a financing structure such that companies can then really run these research and development projects. Another challenge can be that the time frame is very, very long. 2050 is very far out. That means we need to come up with interims targets. And that's exactly what we are on the Asset Owner Alliance side are working on. We try to define now a target of greenhouse gas reductions by 2025 to kind of have a first or a next step of the reduction. Again here we see a clear link to the currently needed recovery because that recovery as said before should be considered as a section, a first section of these long-term paths for these companies and in that sense the interims target 2025 and the recovery phase really come together. If we follow this approach we can really cover the entire portfolio. And in that context, I should mention that we really welcome the development of green assets, of taxonomies and similar concepts that actually help to identify assets that fit very well the climate neutrality objective. However, it must be mentioned that for instance, green assets alone are not sufficient. We must talk about the entire portfolio and the development of the entire portfolio towards climate neutrality. We have to work with governments. We really need the support of governments. There are two very prominent topics I would like to mention here. One is we ask for mandatory reporting of greenhouse gas footprints for every individual company. If such mandatory reporting would exist, our engagement process, the work with those companies, would really gain in terms of quality and perhaps also speed. We don't think that reporting needs to be developed completely from scratch. Standards like uh, DCFT are readily available and one can build on those to come up with the mandatory reporting of the greenhouse gas footprints for the companies. A second topic that we discuss with governments is the price of carbon. We do think there should be a pricing of emissions, ideally market-based, and yes, if one is allowed to dream, ideally a global price of greenhouse gas emissions. There is a third topic that we discuss with governments, which is we of course ask governments to invite their investment structures, funds, to join us. Long-term investors can certainly contribute to the efforts needed to change for a sustainable normal, to change towards a climate neutral economy. I believe making the commitment to achieve for the entire portfolio climate neutrality by 2050 is sending a message to many partners, especially to governments. They then see that we as investors are together with them in one boat. We want to achieve what they pledged in 2015 in Paris. As I mentioned already, we really invite other investors to join us. The bigger a group we are, the more effective we will be. And together, we can achieve a sustainable new normal in climate neutrality. I wish you a very successful conference.